I am Christine Deschler. I am the chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. Please let me confirm that all members are present and can hear me. Um, members of the Finance Committee and staff, when I call your name, please say yes, starting with Jordan. Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Sophie? Yes. Brian? Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Uh, Annie I think is not with us. Alan Jones? Alan Jones? Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. And Dave McKenna? Dave? Yes. All right. Uh, Tara, Tara Bradley? Yes. All right. Uh, and I believe we have Sean from ACMI with us. All right. This open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, as extended on July 16, 2022, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting, ensuring public access. Did Christine just freeze? I, th I think she did. Christine, we can't hear you. I'd say her computer had a little- She's glitch. frozen. Yeah, yeah she froze. Either that or she's staying really still. Mm -hmm. Those lawyers are highly disciplined, you know. <laughs> Probably it's a reboot or something, reattach. <laughs> Daryl, you're in charge. You approved bought a coup. Vote every budget down. What do you do? <laughs> Um, okay, it looks like she disconnected from the meeting too. Am I, am I the only officer here? <laughs> yeah, you're in charge. Be, be, be I think Alan Jones has joined. A Alan, Alan Jones just joined. Oh, I was gonna say, be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back I'll, on in a minute, I'm sure. This is Carol, and I'll put myself back on the screen once I finish eating my supper. There we are. Welcome back. I'm sorry about that. I'm having internet problems. All okay. right. Well, I will uh continue as if you all heard me um i'm gonna um all right and for this meeting oh, <laughs> oh dear how oh, again precinct 19 is having um, internet problems i think i'm gonna try to call her and send her the dial in or maybe she could just dial in from her phone Good. Excellent idea, Tara. I only thought I was the guy that had all the, all the internet problems, but uh, it's catching. Mm -hmm. It's catching. It's the we, same area. It's the same area. So 
Same area town, Dave. So I'm telling totally you, it's bouncing off Turkey Hill Tower. Uh, yeah, actually, be. I have problems once in a while, too. I'm in, in the same neighborhood. Yeah, you're, you're, you're up in James Street, so you're yep. welcome there you to go. <laughs> There is there's actually a dial in on the regular invitation if you go if, if you can tell a reminder about the dial in. She's probably trying the uh, internet connection once again. Maybe this is a coup by the vice chairman. <laughs> Never. <laughs> she can also maybe use her uh, phone that use the. Uh, the, yeah, you uh, could use, use your phone. You could link in through your phone or you could dial in through your phone. Via, exactly. Yeah. Use, the, use the internet connection on the phone. Either way, yeah. As a, a you know, Wi Fi. Uh, oh, a hotspot. You mean hotspot. Hotspot. Yeah, hotspot. Yeah. yeah. iPhone hotspot. All right. Well, well Daryl is actually going to uh, take an Uber right over there now and help her out because he'll do anything not to have to lead the meeting. <laughs> Christine's here. There we go. Christine. You hear Daryl me? is really great. Yeah. To I can hear you, yes. Yes, we can hear you, Christine. All right. Well, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. I'll try to continue as normal. All right. All right, so please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folk may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Before turning to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members and invite each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy without other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Let it, let's move on to the minutes. So I received one update from Rebecca, um, just noting the update for the different commissions that the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Department work on, um, and that is noted in red here. Can you show that again, Tara? Yes. So I changed DEI to Human Rights Commission. And is that it? Does anyone have any other revisions or corrections to the meeting, the minutes of um, the meeting on February 8th? Jennifer? Yeah, so there's one place where oh, I can't see it. Um, where under diversity, equity, and inclusion, it referred to the Board of Health Revolving Fund, and that felt like that shouldn't be in that place. That's F. Yeah, item G. Or is it G? Sorry, G. Yes. And what are you saying about? I, I would think it should be in just the health and human services budget. You got to have that, Tara. Yep. Any other corrections, changes? All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Jordan. Yes. 
Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Brian. Carolyn. Present. <laughs> or abstain if that's what you need. Okay. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. <laughs> yes. Josh. Yes, yes, yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Abstain. I wasn't here at the meeting. Annie is not here. Alan Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Al Tosti. Yes. Dean. Yes. And Dave. Yes. The minutes have been approved. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, matters. Next Monday is President's Day. We won't be meeting on uh, Monday. Um, the following week is the 27th and we're expecting the Capital Planning Committee to present on the 27th and right now we are looking at um, Wednesday, March 1st, as an, the night that Minuteman may be coming in. Um, we just need to uh, finalize, to get everyone to, to, to say yes, finally, on that. But it looks like March 1st will be uh, when Minuteman will come in. Um, when we were doing the library budget, um, there was a question about how... Uh, much was in the library trust funds. Uh, Rebecca, do you wanna update us on that? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, the question came up two meetings ago when we were talking about the library trust funds. So I reached out to the director of the libraries, Anna Litton, and her response was, the board of library trustees manages 26 funds, ranging from very small funds that hold less than $5,000 to funds that hold over $1 million. These funds combined hold a balance of over $9 million. And she just further notes this figure is a total value and includes principal that's not available to spend. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. All right. Uh, I sent, I forwarded you um, information that Julie Wayman sent to me regarding department head salaries that she. Um, compiled after speaking with um, Dave and, and Sophie. Um, Dave and Sophie, do you want to add anything um, to that? Um, you, you, the two of you were the, 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 uh, the uh, instigation of this. So uh, Sophie, take it away. Um, we have one follow-up question for her clarification, and we're speaking tomorrow morning at 9.30. So we'll, we'll have a uh, final answers. Specifically, our question is related to non-unit, non-union um, employees, um, and, and a bit more information on on those calculations. Charlie, you have your hand up. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Christine. Um, my recollection is that the classification and pay plan that was circulated with the uh, in the town manager's budget did not have the um, M schedule in the in that package, and the one that you sent out the other day in your email includes on the last page the M schedule. So just so people know that. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for that, Charlie. If I, if I may, that there was that one change that came up in our meeting with her because we noticed it was missing. And then on one other uh, schedule, um, it had still listed, it's the one for salary plan non-unions, the one in our book says fiscal year 2023. Um, she updated that in the attachment that we all received to fiscal year 2024. That was the only other change. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, who has budgets ready? Anybody? Somebody must have a budget ready, please. I, I guess I can do a budget. 
All right, take it away, Charlie. So uh, what I will do is the comptroller's budget. And I would like to just, uh, I have a, a short uh, presentation. If if you can uh, get, let me have the screen, uh, Tara, for sure. Yep, all set. Yep, you can show up, sir. Okay, now I have to make it work. Hang on a second. Here we go. Huh, there we go. All right. Um, so um, we'll just talk about the meeting, the budget, the expense budget, and some other items and the recommended vote. Um, at the meeting was Ida Cody, the comptroller, Topher, and myself. It was a Zoom meeting. And sorry, my mouse is a little fast today. So uh, we looked at the uh, comptroller salary budget. Uh, we have no issues I mean, in personnel budget. We have no issues with the uh, personnel budget. And we did verify that all the salary detail uh, complies with the master salary schedule in the classification and pay plan. Then we had uh, went through the expense budget and we had several questions, mostly about those items that are uh, highlighted in yellow. Uh, with respect to the overtime budget, uh, not surprisingly, the uh, uh, comptroller noted that uh, most of the time, most, and, and I can tell you personally from my experience that um, accounters, accounting departments, when they come to the year end close, often have to produce a high level of overtime. And um, she has also been uh, putting in a new uh, chart of accounts, which created a lot of extra work and will continue to create work, but we will uh, look to monitor that versus the actual in the future. Um, both Topher and I were concerned about uh, in-state travel and out-of-state travel. And um, the in-state travel is principally for uh, something called a mass municipal auditor certification. Uh, Ida Cody is a CPA. But you, she also, they're also required to have a municipal auditor certification uh, category to be qualified in uh, Massachusetts in the municipal finance, um, let me call it system or environment. And, and she also is bringing two other people in, into this category because she wants to have them certified and up to date as well. This uh, because sometimes these uh, various uh, rules and regulations about how uh, one uh, deals with state requirements and keeps the books change from time to time. The out of state travel is uh, principally for uh, Munis systems and she's got two people, uh, hopes to have two people going to the Munis conference. And uh, it, apparently, uh, you know, we are now using the Munis cloud system uh, you know, actually it was more than just a cloud system. It's a Windows version of Munis. And we recently transferred to a completely, completely uh, cloud environment as opposed to locally hosted. And as a result, it's being updated fairly frequently. So getting a, a knowledge about the new releases and how to deal with them it means that it's important that they attend uh, these Munis conferences. And actually, um, I have to say, having two people travel out of state to uh, meetings for $4,000 is pretty short money from my viewpoint. Um, and then in the training section, um, she's got more people going to Munis training, uh, well, I'll, I'll say somewhat locally, they have to pay tuition. Um, and this um, it also includes training for uh, being a certified purchaser. And being a certified purchaser helps with uh, dealing with town purchasing processes and with compliance issues, um, meaning how you make sure that um, you know the, the sufficient uh, quotations sent sent out for for potential to potential vendors, and ensuring that the process doesn't allow for any uh, unseemly um, activities, otherwise known as um, 
uh, corruption. And so she's striving to have um, uh, as many people as possible have this certification. And in general, she wants to have all of the people uh, cross trained so that she's got you know, a certain amount of bench depth uh, through uh, redundant capabilities. So that's basically what those uh, highlighted areas are about. I'd be happy to answer any questions on that if I can. Just in general. Carolyn. Yes. Carolyn has a question. You're on Good mute, evening. Carolyn. I'm listening to you, and and for those of you who are newer to the committee, um, I used to actually do the comptroller's budget, and um, my under my recollection was that there were only three people in that office, the comptroller and two others. Is that your? T you, it sounds like there's now more. I uh, I re I recall there being more, but um, I have to say that. What when what period were you talking about? Up until two years ago, maybe it was her, maybe it was the comptroller and three others. But how many are there now? The comptroller and three others. Okay, so it was three. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to all of these new responsibilities, and it's occurring to me that all of them are going to be asking for an increase in their step or grade, a reclassification or an increase in their step or grade or both based on all of this new skill set and or responsibility. Is, can you ask about that or? Well, we, we didn't ask about that. And, and candidly, I wouldn't because that's, how, that's like uh, trying to wake the sleeping giant, you know? Well, um, that's a personnel department issue. Um, yeah, and if they if they go through the process, they go through the process. They have the right to do that. Right. I mean, I just don't feel it's our our role to. Um, well, I think we can anticipate those salaries increasing based on what you just said in the year in the future years. I, I could be wrong, but you mean because they're being cross trained? Right. I don't know. Uh, that that's not something that we actually, it, you know, that doesn't really, that doesn't mean that they're going to be doing a different job in their day-to-day -day work. It just means that they have uh, increased their professional capabilities. So I don't, that's a, that's a subtle distinction, but I don't know how, how it would affect job classification. Okay. I, I just figured I'd bring it up. Carolyn, I'm curious, other than, we may be paying more in salary. Do you think, are, are you otherwise opposed to cross-training? And Not necessarily. It's just that we are increasing their um, level of skill set. Um, and so we just need to anticipate in doing that, that that may increase their responsibility, which would then increase their salaries. So I, I would argue that's not the case, Carolyn. Okay. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the job description is what defines the salary and the work, you know, compared to a whole, you know, ensemble of maybe 50 or 100 other job descriptions. But if somebody, let's say that the, the principal accountant book, bookkeeper is asked to do the senior accountant's work during uh, vacation time or something like that. Right. The normal, normal practice in the town is to give them out of pay grade, out of grade pay yes. <clears throat> for that time pay. period. For that yeah. time period, yeah. so they're they're appropriately compensated. Okay. Sophie, um, I just wanted to ask since my question is also related to personnel budget. I noticed the longevity was decreasing, so I went back to last year's book. And there's hasn't been a change in employees. So I'm curious as to why it's on Shay, the bookkeeper. I'm curious as to why the longevity disappeared. But then I also noticed the steps went down. It was a step eight last year and it's a step five this year. Is that Ooh. normal? Um, no. It, 
uh, are we talking about a, uh, you're talking about the assistant controller? Uh, no, did the last person, Shay, the principal accountant clerk bookkeeper, last year's budget book has a step eight, grade five, step eight, and also has a longevity of 500. Uh, I, I actually didn't check that. I just, I just looked at it because I noticed the longevity had gone down, but there were no vacant positions last year. So that what, that's what made me just look right now. Sorry, I would have said something sooner. I, I don't have any, any response to that. I can look into it. Carolyn, if she got a longevity last year, that doesn't mean she'll get one this year. Why is that? Carolyn, you're on mute. Sorry, I keep turning it on and off. It appears once in a great while. It doesn't continue year after year upon year. Isn't that correct, or am I wrong? Longevity every once every while and every right. once in a while. Yeah, that when you hit anniversaries, it's like five times. Once you learn, once you earn longevity, it, it's 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 there until either you retire or leave. Oh, okay. Thank thank you for correcting that, David. Yes, thank you. But that that leads to a question. Okay, so I can go back and check on why she um, why that grade went down if it actually did. or might have been wrong last year. Right, so two questions, the step down, the step, the change in step from last year to this year downwards, and then the the longevity disappearing. Yeah. Uh, I don't have last year's book in front of me, but was it the same name? Yes, I do. I have it open in front of me. It's the same name. And this year's book doesn't show a previous person, which is what triggered me looking. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did last year's book show a previous person? No. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions on the uh, expenses? Anyone, Carolyn? So those that training is a one year training, correct? That's not going to appear year upon year. Uh, it's, it's well, it's shown here for two years. So we know it's those two years. I don't know what the future is going to bring. It depends probably on what the if, what standards change. OK, I got the impression. I had the impression from Eden that like they had to stay current and that that could mean not the same training year after year, but new trainings would come up. I mean, the, the, the fact is that the, the, the Munis uh, package is pretty, um, pretty complex and pretty all encompassing. And, um, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not familiar with all of the details, but there is a general ledger. Uh, there is a cash management program, a water sewer billing program. Uh, there's a headcount management, um, you know, personnel management program. Um, they have not, as I, I haven't mentioned yet, but they have not installed one of the packages yet. Um, but they will, you know, probably do that during fiscal 24. But each of these packages has you know, is developed the company that provides Munis is called Tyler, Tyler Computing or Tyler Company or something to that effect. And you know, they Tyler Tech, Tyler Tech, and they and they uh, upgrade these packages on a regular basis. So I don't know, I can't forecast what the um, what the requirement is going to be going forward. It, it's just a much larger expense than there used to be, but we can anticipate at least half of that going forward, it looks like. Josh? 
Yeah, I was just wondering in terms of their their training and expansion, if they have any plans to put the budget back into Munis. On a, on a, like a GI our, kind of. You mean our budget book? Mm hmm. You know, so we could compare budget and actuals by department by account. Sorry. Uh, my mouse, my mouse is a little touchy today. Um, But we didn't we didn't ask about that. Uh, we, we do get she she does have a program to compare uh, budget and actuals. She could do that now by department, by actually not just department by line item, because I've seen such reports. In fact, I remember last year um, on a you know on a on a quarterly basis that the comptroller provides the budget versus actual comparison to the town manager and the board of selectmen. And I believe I sent one or two of those out to the entire committee last year. So, I, I mean, I know that capability is there. I don't know that it's in the same format that we're used to looking at in this manager's um, budget book. Okay, thank you. I, and if I can add one thing, Josh, um, I think Christine sent out a a document from um, from um, Julie Wayman that shows the actuals by department um, for right. the last several right. years. She did, and I was able to take like those actuals and bring them into Excel as a pivot table, and then you can kind of easily, you know, you figure it out up right. and down. You know, however much you want to kind of explore the data, it's very helpful. I think. So, I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree. This might be a good uh, time to, to say, state this, but um, we are, we've struggled with the, the, the way the budget report is presented to us versus the way we present it to town meeting, the way uh, the town presents its budget in other forums, um, and there, uh, I I know Al Jones has been uh, advocating yeah. getting a better, more informative budget um, report that that can be um, used by easily used and transparent by different groups and. This is, this is something we're going to continue to work on. And in fact, uh, I've had a conversation with Julie Wayman and Sandy Pooler in the summertime about uh, getting our heads together and figuring out a better way. Um, but for right now, this is what we have. But our expectation is that when this budget cycle is over, we might uh, jumpstart that effort um, and see if we can produce something that is better. That's that's the hope. So, um, yeah, I, I I hope our IT our IT working group can, can come up with a solution to that. I suppose. Um, it, Josh, uh, just you reminded me of one thing I, I thought I would mention to the committee, and that is um, those uh, master spreadsheets that we got from the town are somewhat unwieldy to use because there's so many rows and so forth, but um, on where this uh, ID number is here, it, this actually I think is column D in the um, in the Excel spreadsheet, and columns A, B, and C are hidden. And uh, if you um, unhide them, and you can set a filter up in the top row, and you can actually so one of these columns is department, so you can create sort of sub spreadsheets with just one department in each if you want to be manipulating the data. I just thought I'd pass that along. Okay, uh, so on the, on the um, I'm gonna look up the longevity. I don't think I have anything to look up or get back to you on with respect to the expenses, right? That's correct. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions about the controls budget? So, just some general uh, information. Um, the audit was very su successful. Um, 
I actually haven't looked at it myself, the, the audit books uh, reports, but according to um, Ida, they had no management citations. In other words, no list of things that had to be fixed for the next audit review. It went pretty fast. In uh, the towns, it, it actually uh, re required less time than uh, in previous years from the from the auditors, and it's basically because the municipal system is is now uh, implemented pretty well and it's functioning, um, you know, to a to a tremendous degree, making life a lot easier than it used to be. Um, the new Munis water water and sewer billing, which you may recall we discussed last year at finance committee. Uh, was not installed, and it's it's now installed and integrated. Uh, they were apparently waiting for the um, water sewer DPW to get the remote water sewer, remote reading water sewer meters in place, and that's been completed, and um, and and that was managed by uh, Patty Sautel, who I guess has re has uh, retired, but she, but uh, Ida Cody says she did a great job. Uh, free cash came in at 16 million in September, so that's good news. And Topher and I were asking um, her about the audit firm Powers and Sullivan, which used to be a pretty small shop. And and um, and Jim Powers, I don't know, I don't know the Sullivan partner, but uh, Jim Powers is, you know, he's a pretty senior guy. I mean, I expect that it's in not too many years he's going to be retiring. And uh, I was curious as to um, what sort of business continuity plan they had in place. And according to Ida, they have now many partners and um, it, there's, a, there's a lot of bench depth there. So I think the, the continuity of that relationship is, is uh, you know, pretty well assured. And finally, uh, she reported that all of the Munis modules have been installed and working except for the general billing module which she claims is not critical, but should be working in fiscal 24. That sort of begs the question as to why we bought it, but uh, let's assume that it's gonna be more critical in the future. So um, what, we, what we're what we recommending here is, uh, oh, questions. Yeah, Dave. Uh, Dave. It, 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 going back to that um, principal account, uh, bookkeeper position. It looks like there's a different person doing that job going forward because the whole line compared to last year's budget is completely different. So there might be a situation where this person somehow is retiring or have retired, but it looks like the whole, the, the, the whole job has been um, reclassified from the position, the dollar amount last year to the dollar amount coming. Can you see that if anybody has the last year's book? I don't have it handy. I don't have it handy either. I, I have it handy. This is Sophie, if I could. What so, page is it? In the 39. Old in the old book? It's 39 in both books. And that's what I was saying. Maybe it's just a question of they didn't update the name of the employee, or maybe the yeah. employee has the same last name, which could explain it. So it's either the numbers or it's the name of the employee that needs to, there, there's just something. And the budget is for less than what was um, the yes. expense of last year. Yes. She didn't have any um, comment about that. And basically, um, I think I, we can look into it and check on it, but I, I'm gonna recommend that we vote the budget as presented. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, it has, it's only gone up by $3,000 out of uh, three, almost $350,000. So I think I think it's even though there are some there's been some movement around of different uh, categories, um, you know it's pretty pretty stable, and um, she certainly answered all the questions that we had for her. Would you agree with that, Topher? Uh, yes. 
I'm I'm inclined I'm inclined to want to vote this budget as well, especially since the that the salary is going down, not up. Uh, I'd be more concerned if it were going um, up. Topher, did you have a question? I just had a yeah, I did have one comment. Um, you had mentioned about the the uh, general billing package, um, and being installed in FY twenty four. Um, given our discussion with IT and they're being down a project manager, I just wouldn't want to miss up the expectation. I don't know if they'll get to it and the whole IT working group and what what gets above the line and below the line. It was less, I mean, obviously Ida can't install the package herself and I'm, I'm not sure if IT will have the bandwidth. So just a comment, just so the committee's not, and committee's on, committee understands. Thank you, Trevor. Dean? I think Dean has a question. Dean? Yeah, it's, it, I just have a, a comment, uh, maybe two, and that is, um, you know, in regards to the increases in training and travel, um, you know, I support it, and I just want to give you my own sort of just personal insight into it, and that is, you know, for, for a long time, people that write government accounting standards Sort of ignored governments as these like far off weird cash basis entities that we didn't have to do anything with and then you know around like 1998 1999 this realization set in that um that was a bad idea because the way you just account for things on the cash basis the the, the unintended consequences political leaders can make promises that help today and really hurt the enterprise in the future and so the people that write these rules endeavor to make these, to, you know, take these sort of sleeping issues and, and make them more transparent. And you know, we we've seen that over the years, right? We've seen um, we've seen pension costs move on to the balance sheet and become more transparent. We've seen OPEB costs move on to the balance sheet and become more transparent. And that movement has continued, right? To put this into context, I always think that Gatsby Statement Thirty Four is when they started caring about governance. That was written in um, 1999. So, right, so for the exception of writing accounting standards till 1990, or for governments till 1990, I get 34 of them. Um, they just issued Gatsby Statement Number 101 last year. So, you've got this huge ramp up in the amount of um, accounting literature and detail that, that has to be followed. And so, consequently, you now have an accounting department that really has to keep up to. Um, to date with this in order to get the work done. And I think, you know, I think that's probably a lot of the struggle that Ina's articulating and wanting to follow up on continuing education and things like that. Um, I think the second thing which I would point out is, especially on the technology side, as um, as the MUNIS system, um, I don't know what the word would be, as it sort of moves throughout our government, like it used to just be in the comptroller's office, right? Now it's Munis is used in the treasurer's office once ICS was retired. It's now used in the water sewer department once that system is retired. Well, someone has to run the thing, right? Someone has to be the, like the centerpiece of the operation to make it all work. And that invariably is the comptroller's office. You know, that's sort of this other area of complexity that's been added to that, um, that office that wouldn't have been there 20, 25 years ago. So just my two cents. Thank you, Dean. Any other questions, comments? Do you, are you going to have a motion, Charlie? Yes, uh, I'm going to, making the mo move the motion that uh, we vote this budget as presented. Salaries three hundred fifty-one thousand four fifty-six, expenses twenty-seven thousand six hundred for a total of three hundred seventy-nine thousand oh fifty-six before the offsets. And the taxation total of three hundred forty-seven thousand six hundred eight dollars. Second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing no hands, I'm going to take a vote on the controller budget. Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. 
Yes. Daryl? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. L. Tosti? Yes. Dean Carmen? Yes. Dave McKenna? Yes. Right. The controller's budget has been approved unanimously. Charlie, you'll get uh, your follow up on that on the Shea issue and let us know what you learn. Anyone else have a budget? I think we can do assessors. Great. Take uh, it away, Topher. Okay. Um, I will say there was, we, we, we uncovered a small discrepancy in the 21 actuals, which I can cover first in case that, you know, I don't, I'm new, so I don't know if that would sink the ship or not, but I will, why don't I present that first and then people feel like that's an okay thing to proceed with. We can still have the discussion, obviously, but I, I have brought it to um, Dana Mann's attention. He's looking into it. But let me share my screen and explain what that is. So. And, uh, Okay. okay, so there's a couple things here. So this is the assessor's budget. So what I noticed was in office supplies here, this number in 2021 was 1939. But if you look at the report that Julie Lehman runs over here, it's 2092. So it's a uh, small discrepancy that they were going to look into, but I haven't heard back from them yet. It just looks like to be a, on the order of $150. $150. So I can continue on and present the rest of the budget, but I just wanted to highlight that first. Why don't you go out, go on? Till okay, yeah, it's not a. I mean, that's not a. That's not a problem. Then we'll we'll keep going. Okay, so um, I'm Charlie, and I met with uh, Dana Mann, Director of Assessments, um, and had a number of questions that we we went through. Um, so um, let's see. So salaries and, and wages, um, <clears throat> we went through this. Um, Charlie was good enough to check through the steps. I think those all came out okay. So I didn't see anything here that was way out of whack. We can see if there's questions on that. Um, but let me go through the expenses too, just to explain what's there. Um, um, so stipends, um, in this case, their payments to either volunteers or I guess elected officials um, to offset any expenses they have. Um, I do notice that the board of the, um, I believe we, we actually do account for the uh, assessors getting their stipend down here in the, in the um, salary detail. Um, I didn't ask about the auto allowance, but my guess is it's for personal use of autos um, by either the department head or others. Um, the computer maintenance um, is um, entirely for their assessment database. Um, and um, they did, um, so, <clears throat> and as, we, as you may know, they did um, update to the Patriot Web Pro uh, this this past year, and I'll talk more about the cost of that and where it comes from. But the maintenance goes in there, and that is apparently the bump from twenty five hundred to twenty three five. Um, in state travel is um, in this case it's uh, a piece of training. Um, they want to send the data collector 
uh, to a training in UMass this summer to become a certified assessor. So that's why that's there. Um, the consulting fee is for um, appellate tax board appeals. Um, so if somebody uh, you know, contests their assessment um, and can't resolve it within the town and goes to the appellate tax board, then we would have to defend that. Um, given that it can be lumpy, um, you know, one case can come up or not. Um, and then uh, the office supplies were down in 21 and 22, Dana thinks, because just people were in the office less due to the pandemic. Um, so we agreed to like let that stay where it is and look at it another year. See, so let it stay it is for another year and we can continue to look at it. And, you know, otherwise unclassified is, I guess last year it was a laser measure tool. Um, it goes through that. Um, so that's the um, expenses. There's one other piece of this, which is um, if I go down to down here, I'll go to, um, whoops, there we go. Um, it's 200 in your book, but it's 208 here. Um, the revaluation fund, and that's done um, to support, that's actually this year, that's where the actual, I guess, main cost of Patriot Web Crow is coming from, per the town manager said. He said it will probably end up at 60 to 70K but that's where that's coming from. And we had a discussion about revaluation and the process for that. Um, so the revaluation is when they have to come through and look through your, you know, your houses and all, all property really um, to look at that. And it's not, um, it's, it doesn't have to happen in the full, I guess the full blow until it's like 2029, but there's an interim one that happens in 2025 and it needs to be budgeted for in 2024. So um, that's that. Um, Charlie, have I left anything out that you can think of? Yes. Uh, there was one thing the, uh, they have, uh, if, um, if I recall right or correctly, they have uh, 16 to $20,000 left in the, earlier revaluation article. And they've been using, th this is from several years back, and they've been awesome. us using it to hire Patriot software to do some specific uh, consulting work. In the uh, the last two years, the uh, I think it was $6,000 a year, was spent on assessing the value of the or the utility account utility uh, infrastructure in the town telephone poles and things like that and uh the result is in each of the when they complete it and so the, the 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 taxpayer there is somebody like uh national grid you know or or the uh, telephone right. company or whatever and um so the result is that it, each of those expenditures of six or seven thousand dollars resulted in uh, Eighty-five or ninety thousand dollars additional tax revenue in the year for the town. So that's a pretty good um, use of the money. Yeah, yeah. He said it was eighty-nine point six k. Is in my notes, and uh, and the amount in the un of the reval account of the income of the funds was uh, he has twelve thousand five sixty-seven sixty-three. That's um, left. That's left. Yeah, that he's using it for. But yeah, yeah. He said essentially the um, personal property valuation. Um, gets fairly complicated and, you know, it can be business furniture equipment. It can be the stuff for the utilities and how it's done, you know, affects how it's the, the tax status of the entity that owns the property affects how it's taxed. And his quote was, you know, we leave that to the experts to, to, to determine. So, um, but yes, they definitely, the review of commercial assessments uh, uh, is important. Um, All right, so we have a couple of questions. Okay. Carolyn? So um, again, this is because I haven't been on in a couple of years. Did somebody retire from the assessor's office a few years ago and or did we <clears throat> move OPEB? 
from a separate account into each individual account, I was surprised to see OPEB in, in this particular account. But I could be completely wrong. Um, I, again, I haven't done this in two years. Um, are you saying OPEB's not in the up here? Did you mean? No, I think I think Carolyn. Excuse me, Silver. I, I think the sheet that uh, Topher was showing was for the Warren articles, and it was just. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just All right. because, because Sorry. they were using that account to pay for Patriot Pro. Uh, I wanted to just show that I had to jump down at page 208 or whatever it was to do that. Carolyn, did you have a second question? No. Okay. Jordan. Uh, so you may have uh, you may have answered this already, but um, I just wanted to uh, make sure for my understanding. So on the warrant article, the hundred thousand dollars, that's um, that includes both uh, consultant services that Patriot provides, as well as additional consultant um, uh, fees for the revaluation. Is that correct? Or are they both performed by um, by Patriot? They, are they, I believe, they are both. Yes, they're both uh, supplied by Patriot. That is true. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's not. Some of the consulting came out of what was left in the reval account. That's what Charlie was saying. And then, but yes, I believe beyond that, um, it was, you know, getting to the new platform. And I think it was both uh, products and services. I can double check that with Dana if you'd like. No, and that's what it sounded like to me. And I just wanted to make sure that I heard it right. I know that we, um, uh, Charlie mentioned that we have about, um, was it 16 grand left from a previous uh, Warren account? Um, so we we'll would be looking to add grand. another 100,000 for the uh, Patriot consultancy uh, so, uh, services that they provide um, regarding the reval, but then it would also cover um, uh, any other additional expenses that we have for going to Patriot, They've just for the actual software portion of it. I, I, that's if I can enter a comment here. Yeah, that's that's correct, Jordan. Um, that's for the for the interim revaluation that has to be prepared for for the state, um, which is in I think fiscal year two thousand twenty five is when they have to do it. That's right. And the money has to be voted the prior year. That's and, right. And um, the the formal let me use the very unscientific term, big evaluation, revaluation, uh, takes place every 10 years. It used to be every nine, they have changed it to 10. So it's now, so it, it'll be five years after the one in 2025, probably. Yeah, and thank you for the explanation. I just wanted to make sure for my own understanding um, that I understood the purpose of the Warren article. And um, also thank you for uh, giving us the updates on uh, when both the interim and then the full 10 year uh, revaluation is due. Thank you, Jordan. Dave, you have your hand up. Um, just to um, help Carolyn with her question about the, uh, the employees, uh, Mr. Canning uh, took a, a, a job in, in another community, so he left. Mr. Fieldly unfortunately passed away, so they had to have an election to, to uh, we elect a new person and Mr. Greeley um, resigned as a result of moving out of town. So they had election for that. So that, that's the change since Carolyn was last on as far as the employees in the assessor's office. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Shane? Thanks, Christine. Just, I just, one, one more time on revaluation. Re so this $100,000 from the Warren article is a one, once in a, it's not a continuing cost. And can just, can just somebody explain what revaluation is? Uh, I think I could do that. Um, Telfer, is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. So um, for the, uh, let's just re talk about a residential revaluation, which is most of what we have in the town. So they, they do a, um, a sales price analysis 
of houses that have been sold in the area and compare that to the physical attributes of the town, like of the houses, like how many windows they have, how many doors, how many swimming pools, et cetera. And, and so they come up with um, um, uh, uh, re regression analysis and parameters. And then they go, let's say they've done that on five houses in your uh, district and they have revaluation, they have uh, assessment districts. It's not exactly precincts, but they, they have territories within the town. So they, they apply that, that formula um, to your house because there are six other houses um, sold in that district in the, in the last uh, time frame that they're using. So you, you might have um, you know five windows and only one swimming pool. So, so they plug that into the um, formula and they come up with a valuation for your house, okay? And that, that's having that fair market valuation up to date every five years is a, is a requirement of both the federal law and state law as a result of, um, of uh, rulings in the courts over the last 20 or 30 years. And then every uh, 10 years, they actually have to go out and inspect every house and make sure that uh, you, know, you haven't added a, a little um, accessory building that your, you know, your Airbnb isn't, isn't added and the town hasn't calculated that into the value of the house. And that, that revaluation process, in addition to having Patriot software and Patriot consultants, they have to hire an army of people to go around with clipboards and cameras and inspect every, every building. And so that usually costs the town somewhere. I, the, the last time I looked, I think it was three or four hundred thousand dollars. Maybe it's more, I, I, but it's in the multiple hundred thousand dollar category. And and when I mentioned that that uh, I was off sixteen thousand, I was thinking at the beginning, you know, before they spent that last chunk of money, but um, that amount that's left over was left over from the last big. Uh, reval where they went out and inspected every house, that money stays in the, in the Warren article and can be spent by the assessors on maintaining the fair market value of the database. Does that uh, answer your question, Shane? It does. Thank you very much, Charlie. Jennifer? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, another sort of big picture question. So in that every five year um and analysis do they also look at building permits as so you said you said sort of they talk about neighborhood comps but do they also look at sort of improvements to the house in those last five years the 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 answer is they look at i, I believe they look at the building permits every year you know yeah, that that's comprises the new growth when they when the uh, town talks about new growth um, in value, that comes right out of the building permits. Right. Although and there's it, some that count and some that don't, from what I understand. Is that right? That you know, some kind of improvements to your house count as new growth and others don't necessarily, from my understanding. I don't, I don't know the distinction. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Tofer, do you have a motion? Yes. Um, so I will move that the committee accept the um, assessor's budget with 301, 343 in salaries and 35,248 in expenses for a total of $336,591. Second. Any further discussion on the assessor's department budget? All right, seeing no hands raised, we'll take a vote on the assessor's budget. Uh, Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. L. Jones? 
Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. Dave? Yes. The assessor's budget has passed unanimously. <coughs> Any other budgets ready for tonight? None? All right. Um, Tara, do you have any update on um, commissions and committees, uh, whether they are, anyone's asking for additional money? I know that. No one has, um, none of the people that have responded have asked for additional money. Um, arts and culture can come in uh, like the first week of March. And that's looking like that's when um, the CPA can come in as well. Um, I'm, um, so, the, so they are available, arts and culture is available no sooner than the 27th, correct? Correct, and, the, and they would prefer not to come in that day if possible. Okay, um, all right. And we have the, C, the Capital Planning Committee presentation that night anyway, so I'm, I'm disinclined to want them to come in that night. And on Wednesday of that week, we have Minuteman. Um, I'm inclined to probably want to bump them to the next week. Okay. Um, but maybe we can also urge them to get any written materials to us the week before so that uh, we have plenty of time um, to look it over and, and sharpen our questions for them. Um, so that may be, and Sophie, you're still waiting to hear from the Disability Commission, correct? Correct. So they too, trying to get them to come in at some point. They probably won't take as much time, but um, we'll, we'll see when they're available and we'll fit them, fit them in. But it seems like um, those are the only two committees or commissions we're gonna have come in, unless Tara here is oh, something and different. Water bodies, yeah. So I'm water bodies is still figuring things out. Yeah, so that'll be the third. All right, and um, Al Tosti is still working on trying to get us a, a, a look at the, the warrant this year. And uh, as he reminded me um, earlier, uh, it was we didn't see one until the end of February last year. So that may be what we are confronting this year as well. Um, if you want no, to add anything. Uh... Last year was unacceptable. I'll, I'll go sit in on the selectman's office before I let that happen again. So, you know, hopefully <laughs> um, we'll get it. I'll get something next week, a draft. I just want to get it before they number it. Uh, so yeah. things, you know, gets in concrete, but I'll keep trying. Great, thank you, Al. Um, and if that's the case, seems like we may be scheduling warrant article hearings in March, making it all more important to get our budgets done uh, if we can before then, or get as many done as we can before then. Carolyn, I see your hand is up. Um, so the last year I was on, Annie LaCourt was gonna start working with the Arts Council to help them better prepare. Um, has that been happening? And have they gotten any better at having a little more substance or at least financial substance in their presentations? I, I think she has certainly helped them. I think the fact that we are asking them to come in, um, even though, as I understand, Tara, they're not asking for more money. Um, right. I, I think the, the, we, it's, a, it's a large amount of money that they have yeah. compared to the other commissions. So, I think we just want to keep our uh, uh, be more just be vigilant right now. Right. Um, but I do think that Annie has helped, and I think that they too they have improved in their okay. their presentation reporting. But we'll see. And then, and then I'm doing reclass with 
Can, um, Karen Cove Malloy, it always takes a while on March 7th. So I'll be able to do that at that time. All right. Great. Thank you, Carolyn. Tara, make sure we schedule that in the 7th. I'm, I'm sorry, can you just repeat that? Carolyn will do the reclass on March 7th, correct? Okay. Yeah, March. or whatever is the next it's day good. after that. Okay, the 8th, okay. Yeah. All right. Shane. Thanks, Christine. Uh, we're working on, we're getting some time in the calendar with the, our new facilities director uh, and DPW, it's penciled in. So, uh, but that's just forecasting. It's not gonna be till probably March that we'll be ready because we got the, uh, the winter break coming up. So, but we're working, we got some some questions in and just for the group, uh, we've heard a couple of times things are moving around the facilities. So uh, if there's any questions you want us to ask of the new facilities team in particular, but also DPW, please just, uh, just let me know. Yeah. Thanks, Shane. Uh, having Thanks. done DPW and facilities, I, it is a big budget and it is one of those budgets that is later in the lineup than, than others because of its complexity. Um, I, this is a good time to remind people, look at the not just your budget, but other budgets and get your questions to those on the committee who are working on them get, so that they are, they are ready with answers. Um, so we don't have to go back and forth with our department heads to, to get answers to questions that we should have and could have addressed the first time around. So um, again, um, look at the budget book and get your questions to the appropriate um, subcommittee as soon as you can. Dave, you have your hand up? Yes, I do. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, to say that Sophie and I, it looks like our, the remaining budgets that we have to present will be um, presented Wednesday. Number one. Number two, for, for all our, our members and to you, Christine, the study of the office of the town clerk has been completed. The Board of Selectmen have received it and the study will be included in their packet to town meeting in the spring. But that, that, that study that, that was, uh, town meeting appropriated the money in, in 2021 and it's finally been completed and, and passed to the, to the board. Uh, there are no recommendations, they're, they're just uh, findings in the report. And you can get that on the, uh, I believe it's, it's on the, uh, the town website. It's on the website right now. It's, that's my understanding. I do have a hard copy um, for our records. I did manage to get a hard copy. So I'll, when we meet again, I'll, I'll give it to you, Christine. Uh, could you give it to Tara and Tara, could you circulate um, copies? to everyone or somehow get it, get the, so that everyone can take a look at it. As I, I'm, I am eager to read it. As I recall, we appropriated a bunch of money for consultants. I believe it was $10,000, Christine, if memory serves me right. Um, yeah, yes, and again, there's no recommendations, it's just findings. And I, I, I think with the urging of the finance committee, again, if memory serves me, we were strongly advocating that, that money be used to find efficiencies in the clerk's office. Um, so it'll be um, interesting to see what the findings are. I can tell you from reading part of it that the, the findings, um, the clerk's office as we know it is, is adequate. That's a finding. That's not to say that they don't make um, uh, uh, comments about what should happen in the future. Um, so it, it's um, based upon the survey that, that this um, study group did. Uh, Dave, do you, 
Oh, sorry. Yes, I, I've sorry. lost. Yes. Oh, do you have the study, or should I just should I ask Julie for it? I have a copy of the study, and I will put it. <clears throat> I will put it in your mailbox. <clears throat> okay. Oh, the finance committee mailbox. Perfect. Thank you. No, no, I'll put it in your mailbox. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, I do you. have a copy of, of the study. Okay. Thanks. It's um, it's a copy that the study is on both sides of the page. The, the comments. Okay. I somehow lost um, Christine. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Yes. I can hear you, but you seem to be frozen. But you can hear me. Yes. All right. Well, I'm shutting my video down. If you can still hear me, I'll keep talking. Okay. Um, so, um, Dave and Sophie, what, what budgets exactly are you going to have ready on Wednesday? Um, the select board's budget, the legal budget, uh, the clerk's budget, which includes the election budget and the registrar's budget, and the managers and the planning. Hopefully. Um, who else might have budgets on Wednesday? We're meeting with the uh, treasurer tomorrow, um, but I, I'm not sure if we'll be ready for Wednesday or not. Um, are people expecting to have budgets next week, next Wednesday? Christine, we're meeting, John and I are meeting with inspections Thursday. Um, so we will have their budget for next Wednesday. Charlie? We're meeting with the retirement on uh, Thursday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. Um, I don't know if we'll be ready to present on Wednesday night or not. There's a chance that we will. In the, in the past, the retirement um, you know, re retirement board has been pretty forthcoming and pretty organized in, in their material. So we'll see. It'll certainly be ready to file the following Wednesday. Uh, well, I, um, I, I'll put this out for discussion. I, um, I am wondering whether we should uh, skip our meeting on Wednesday um, and have a, long, a, a more full meeting the following week. How do people feel about that? I feel like we don't, uh, with Dave and Sophie's budgets, we may not have a full meeting. I guess I'm new, but there's a lot of budgets there, right? Yes, but it, it, uh, to respond, yes, there are, but it goes by pretty quick, hopefully. All right, well, I am inclined, unless I, I, anyone objects, to skip our meeting on Wednesday, on this Wednesday. We will convene again next Wednesday, uh, and hopefully we'll have a whole slew of um, budgets we can, we can deal with. Do you need a motion on that, Christine? No, I don't think we'll need a, I need a motion, okay. um, but I, I is there anyone who has any other business for tonight? Dean. Yeah, just a, an administrative point. Um, so Peggy pointed out to me that the school department has um, posted their proposed FY 2024 budget. Um, rather than making everybody kind of guess where it is and go searching for it, I will send you, Christine, and Tara, a copy of the link, and then you can um, push it out. Um, it's it's a new superintendent. It's a new budget format. I mean, read it, understand it. I mean, I find it incredibly easy to understand. I think it's much. Like, I think it flows actually. It's not a very nice narrative, right? But that's just my opinion. I might be totally mistaken. Um, and and sort of consistent with everybody else's. Um, process. If you have any questions for the school budget, just send them to me, Peggy, Josh, and 
it is the largest budget in the town. So you know, any I, I know that when we when we have the budget night, it usually takes up a whole night. But um, you know, if we can pick up questions ahead of time, just so you know, Mr. Mason and Dr. Holman are um, are prepared, and you know, that would be great. So thank you. You don't want to like turn okay. thanks, Dean, and I I will leave leave it to you, Dean and Josh and Peggy to figure out when we can get the school schools in to present to us. I, I sent you an email during the meeting. Josh and Peggy did a great job actually knowing that too. So you can you can look at it and then we'll try to go from there. All right. Anything else that anyone has? All right again we 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 have a list of budgets that we will be we know we'll be covering um, next Wednesday and other budgets will likely be covering next Wednesday. Um, look at those budgets, get your questions to the appropriate people so that um, we can have the budgets presented, the questions answered and take uh, the appropriate action on these budgets. All right, so uh, I will see everyone um, next Wednesday, um, the 22nd. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So I'll move. All right, second. second. All right, second. all in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.